Hi there, welcome to Let's Talk Tottenham. A very unexpected way to end the season with a win against Leicester to end their hopes for Champions League qualification for the second time in two seasons. I'm joined today by Tommy from Spurs Zone TV. We're going to be talking about the game. VAR was front and centre in that game. Two penalties, two handball decisions. Sanchez had an absolute nightmare against Vardy. Is that the last we've seen of him in a Spurs shirt? Similarly, Delhi and Winks, have they done enough to stay next year? Uh, the third goal, a link up between Kane, Son and Bale. But will we see that again next year? Obviously, Kane, talk of him going. Will that happen? He's picked up the golden boot and the playmaker of the year. Bale came off the bench to score two goals and change the game. But will we see him next year with a loan extended? And with Leicester failing with Champions League for the second time in two seasons, does that open the door for Rodgers to become our new manager? So we're talking about all that and much, much more in Golden Boots, Harry, Berries, Foxes. Hi, Tommy. How you doing? Always good after a win, I hope. Very good. After yesterday's game, very, very good. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of goals. I predicted a lot of goals before the game on my previews. Right. So, uh, yeah, I was sort of, sort of right, sort of right. I predicted 3-2, but 4-2, I'm, yeah, more than happy with 4-2. Yeah. Well, I, I, I predicted that we'd get beat just because of how it's been and how the season's been. And then I'm... You can't predict. You can never go against your own club. <laughs> a lot of fans do it, to be fair. I, I, I had people I, in I, chat. But I've been saying that we'll win every game this season. Look what's happened. So I thought I'd go the opposite way and then we won. Right, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I messed it up a little bit. I had my jab yesterday, so I had to watch half of it. I, I watched up until Vardy scored his first penalty, then left and recorded the rest. Didn't realise I left it on that channel. So when I came back, I saw the score. And then no, I that's it on YouTube and then saw the 4-2. But yeah, uh, what, what did you think of the game first and foremost? Like A lot of fight from us there in a game at the end of the season. Are, are you pleased that we won? Annoyed that we didn't show that fight in the season? A bit of both? What, what's your... Reacts well, a bit of a sleep after. To... <laughs> well, the win, the win has meant that basically we're obviously we're in the Conference League, <laughs> and uh, Chelsea got top four. So it's not all good, really, is it? It's not all good. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Um, you've got to look after. You've got to look after. You know, you've got to win the game. And we, after the first 10, 15 minutes, I, I feel like I know when we're going to lose a game. Uh, by the first 10 or 15 minutes, lack of press, always lack of press. It was the same against West Ham, same against Arsenal, same uh, same the other week. Uh, when that lack of press is there, and, and I saw that, I saw that early on, and I was like, oh, we're going to get battered, we're going to lose this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to sound negative, I don't want to sound negative, but if this was the Leicester City before Christmas, they would have destroyed us, I think. I think they would have destroyed us. But their form recently has been pretty bad. So as good as Leicester are, as soon as that ball enters the Leicester box, you can see how organised they are. They're a unit defensively. They're very, very good. But um, they were being sloppy. They're, they're, when their clearances when they, uh, their clearances from uh, their defence was really, really sloppy, they were giving the ball away. And uh, we don't really win too many second balls. So uh, when that started happening, I was thinking, even when they were 1-0 up, I was thinking, we're in here. We've got, we've definitely, definitely got a chance. And... Um, yeah, yeah, we took the ball by the horns and the second half especially was was fantastic. As soon as we scored that equaliser, I haven't seen us play that well for a very, very long time. And it makes you think. It does, as you said, it makes you think um, why we didn't, why we did that do that earlier on in the season. Or even the last two the last two months has been uh, especially bad. I think you'd agree. The last two months have been especially bad. But overall, second half performance, I was, I was, it was brilliant. I thought we played, I thought we played really well. Yeah, I, I thought that second half, once we equalised, Leicester had to go and win. So I think that I think that always plays into yeah. us, certainly with this team, because we're more of a counter-attacking team. I think when teams sit back against us or, or ask us to take the initiative, that's where the game kind of dies out. It's boring. Whereas Leicester were pretty gung-ho. You've got Schmeichel going up for corners, so they're all, all out yeah. and get caught in the counter-attack. But, I mean, <laughs> the second goal, very uncharacteristic from Schmeichel. Uh, first goal, very yeah, characteristic yeah. from Kane. Uh, Let's talk about Kane, actually. Like, I mean, you're probably sick of doing it. You do a podcast every day and you must have to talk about him every day. But Golden Boot... I try and stay away. I try and stay away a little bit. I try, I try and mix it up. You know what I mean? I try and mix it up a little bit. But it is this, obviously, it's the story in everyone's We'll, we'll bring you in to talk about Kane now for five minutes. Um, Golden Boot winner, playmaker winner, or whatever it's called. Uh, do you think he'll stay? Do you think he'll go? Do you think that, like you said, with Gary Neville, we've got to have a chat? Do you think that will bear fruit or anything? Or do you think it's this is going to be, we're talking about this in three months' time still? 
it's so, 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 so difficult. It's so, so difficult. I just feel like there's only one club you can possibly go to. So it's not, it's not about whether, um, and, and it's not about Harry Kane's mentality, whether he's done and wants to go. He's got a three-year contract. He's got a three-year contract. So even, even when he looks a little bit done, and um, I, I've seen it recently, um, the last two or three weeks, and even on the international break, when he started, he started talking a little bit about his own future. Usually it's always linked with a club. Look, we'll see where the club goes. But he was, was like, I'll talk about my future after the season. And we never heard that before. It was always the club's future. And when that started coming out, when that started coming out, I was a little bit, I was a little bit worried. But once again, he's got a three-year contract. Levy <laughs> will not, I tell you what, Levy will not take less than 150 million pounds. Right. No chance. No chance. He will not take less than 150. But um, after the game, that whole hugging session, I don't care about Deli Ali hugging. I've, I've had enough of Deli Ali. <laughs> His social media, what he does on social media and all this rubbish with the tip of the hat and oh, I hate all that stuff. But the, the fact was Son came up to him. When Son started hugging him, it was like, yeah, it looked like he'd sort of lost his brother. I mean, they are. They're, they're so, they're so is- close up. Uh, off the pitch as well, as well as obviously the assists and goals they get on the pitch. Do you think it was that or some some had been taken off so he knew Kane had won the golden boot and stuff and it was just a congratulations thing or do you think, because uh, Harry Kane's wife posted a, a picture with a, I can't remember the wording, but it had a crying emoji so everyone was reading into that like she knows he's leaving. And, but I mean, it could just be like, oh, it's a really good friend's hugging this an emotional moment and he's won, but yeah. But it's so, yeah, there's, there's so much. It's like, it's like here and there, here and there. But I think you've got to get back to the base. You've got to get back to the base. To, to, to um, sign a player, you have to have money. And to sign Harry Kane, our talisman for as many years as it's been Spurs through and through, um, you're going to need 150. And there's only one club. There's only one club. I'm wearing their colours today. I'm wearing their colours today. And that's Man City. He's not going to go... <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's no way. I saw Pep crying with Aguero last night. That was quite, that was quite hard to see. Um, Aguero's gone. Aguero's gone, and that's why. You know what I mean? They've lost their big time striker, their striker of eleven years. So, it's between them and Man United. It's between them and Man United. I mean, I'm going to ask you, Chris. Do you, do you think there's any chance of him going abroad? Do you think there's any chance? I mean, Real Madrid basically said he doesn't want to. And I'm adamant he wants Shearer's record, regardless yeah, of, yeah. of what he says about trophies. I, I'm pretty sure he wants that. And yeah, uh, if he wants to win trophies, Man United is 50 50, isn't it? They could have a good season, they might not. If you want to win trophies, you've got to see because Pep will win you trophies. But Pep said that they're not going to spend more than 100 million. That could just be like trying to get the market down a little bit. But of course, if, of course. If he you know really, that. You really know wanted that. him, those owners will pay that 150 million. But I, I said right from the start that. I think Levy will make it extremely difficult for Kane to go in what you've said, won't accept anything less than 150. And he, he, like you say, he's got a three-year contract. You, you don't really need to have panic stations for a year and a half that he might run his contract now. You might lose 50 million here or there, but <laughs> we didn't pay anything for him. So anything's a bonus, exactly. really. But, Anything's a profit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Delhi there. I, I I thought he did a few good bits, but was fairly ineffective. And that could be because he hasn't played that much, could be any number of issues. Winks as well, although he made that uh, potentially game-saving assault. Pullback. <laughs> yeah. But how brilliant was... Do you know what? I don't care. I don't. That's what Sanchez should have done for the first goal. That's what yeah. Sanchez should have done for the first goal. Because if he pulled Vardy back, he would have only got a yellow card. He, uh, Toby was obviously yeah. um, Toby was obviously last man. Game management. We lack game management at the back. Yeah. I've done a recording a couple of months back and I looked at the yellow cards for the centre-backs. Incredible. Out of the four centre-backs who played this season, it was something like they had five, five yellow cards between them, six <laughs> yellow cards between them yeah. in 28, 29 games. That is incredible. You can say, oh, it's, you know, you don't want your centre-backs to get too many yellow cards. Obviously, it's not good. They'll get suspended if they get too many yellows. And, obviously uh, potentially get sent off if they get two yellows or go in too aggressively. But you want the yellow cards. You've got to make the smart fouls. And Harry Witt, that was an assault. That was an assault, but we, we could have gone on to lose the game. He would have been, um, he would have been, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Ian Acho. He would have been out on his own. He would have been out on his own. He's a smart, smart foul. Took the yellow card. Sometimes what you've got to do. And Harry Witt is the most bookings out of our team. He's already played. I think he's had eight or nine bookings. Like double, double. Well, Hoiberg's had quite a few as well as defensive yeah. fielder. But, Sanchez, Sanchez should have got booked for that <laughs> opening goal. Should have took the booking, free kick, 
it would have been gravy. It would have been. It would have been. I much think better, his, um, his confidence has taken an absolute backing, and he's fairly quick, isn't he? So I think that I could be wrong, but I think that was the first time Vardy ran at him. So I think he probably thought I can keep up with him, and by the time he realised he couldn't, it was too late. But then after that, Vardy literally. He might as well have been holding hands with Sanchez. He didn't leave him, and then he did at one point, didn't they? He got second yeah. penalty. <laughs> I mean, Sanchez, I've defended Sanchez time and time again on here, and I can't remember what game it was a little while ago. I was like, I, I can't anymore. Do, do you think yesterday was I understand. okay, Sanchez? You're, you're playing for your future here. This is your last chance, and he's he's. I mean, he, he got completely torn apart by Vardy, really. And do, do you think he's out or, or looking to be out? And, and similarly, Delhi and Winks, do, do you think they've done enough to stay? Right. Um, starting with Sanchez. Starting with Sanchez. Um, in his foot, yeah, I've been, I was a uh, protector of him. You could say that. I was a protector of him for a very long And Ali. And Ali. Because I knew, like, uh, uh, an attacking midfielder or any midfielder that scores 10, 15 goals a season. I mean, he's scoring 15 goals a season, I think, for his first two seasons, 14, 15. They're worth their weight in gold. Do you know what I mean? A, a midfielder that can do that. That's why, even back then, they were talking about 100 million pounds. But I, I stuck up for him for too long. It's been three years for Ali. It's been three years for Sanchez because Sanchez was outstanding in his first season. Um, really, really good. As you said, pace, physicality. He's probably um, physically the best centre back we've had since Ledley King. Um, in that first season, look, look, so, so good. Um, and I think Barcelona were interested for like yeah. coming in for £80 million. Pounds. And then um, it, it sort of nosedived. It nosedived from there. The thing with him is, he, we talk about his pace. He has got incredible pace, but it feels like he thinks that his pace can get him out of all sorts of trouble. So he can, he can maybe not concentrate as much as he should or his positioning doesn't have to be as good. But when you've got Vardy, we saw Vardy. He's not, he's 34. He's not as fast as he used to be. But like Cavani, <laughs> Like Cavani's very, very intelligent. He knows how to make them runs now on the shoulder. And he done it for the second goal as well. He just timed his run perfectly. Sanchez was nowhere near him. And Sanchez is faster than Vardy now. You know, he's 10 years younger. He's, he's, he's very, very quick. Apparently, he's only behind Reggie in terms of pace in a whole squad, Sanchez. So he's very, very quick. But yeah, he thinks he's going to get him out of trouble, maybe in Holland, in the Air Divise when he's playing at Ajax. He could. But um, yeah, not anymore. And I just want to talk about Winks because I still have his back a little bit, Winks, because I yeah. used to be a football scout and I used to love um, these technically centre midfielders. And when I used to go to Hotspur away, everyone loved him the most. They, they used to rave about him more than they did Harry Kane because technically he is so good. But um, the problem with him, I feel, is the so social media uh, has such a huge part to play on all aspects. We know that now. We don't really know how precise, precisely it affects people. But I feel like with Harry Winks, since Mason's took over, everybody has a go at him for sideways passing, sideways passing. That's that's what he does. That's his job. That's <laughs> it gets overlooked. But you know, Carrick's done that for Man United. He was at Man United for 12 years. He didn't score too many goals, he didn't assist, didn't make too many last ditch challenges. Same with Gilberto for Arsenal. Gilberto got a lot of flack from his own fans. He was part of that Invincibles team. He played 32 out of 38 games, Gilberto. He was there for six years, got nearly a hundred caps. These are not popular players. Nobody will talk about these players and love these players, but they are important in a possession-based team. If you're getting 60% possession, Harry Winks is your man. He, in that, if you play a flat three, he is your man. The, the social media aspect, they've got on his back, sideways passing, sideways passing. He's trying to be more aggressive. It's not his game. It's not his game. And he's looked shocking doing that against Villa. He, he dribbled a few times against Leicester, but then his ball, he, he dribbles a couple of times and his, that, that ball, that easy ball, he, he just can't do it. He's not used to being in those positions. But I'm, I'm not going to stick up for him in terms of performances the last two games. He's, he's not been good and maybe he needs to learn to adapt and he hasn't got the adapting side to his game. But I feel like if he goes to Spain and then Atletico Madrid or someone like that, um, I think he could be, I think he'll be really, 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 really good. I think he'll be really, really good. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna diss him as much as Ali and Sanchez. And Ali, as I said, the last three years he's, he's just nosedived and all this social media rubbish. I don't I don't like any of it. I, feel, I want him to go. I really want him to go. The problem is, what's his value? Nobody. He's such a hard player to value, Deli Ali. And obviously Levy, knowing how financial uh, financially tight he is, he's probably got the same problem. What's Deli Ali's value? Like it's it's, it's so so hard, so hard to predict. Would you take forty million for him? Oh. Pfft. Without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. I think he's going to go on loan. I honestly think he's going to go on loan. To a mid-table Premier League club, like, like a Villa, that would be fantastic. So Mark Barkley's going back. Barkley will almost certainly go back to Chelsea. So 
I wouldn't, yeah, Villa, like Lingard did with West Ham. Um, I think that could be good for him. I, I think that could be good for him. I, I think he should have, got, both of them should have gone on loan in, in January when they were linked. I, I think, I thought maybe that with Pochettino, it's kind of an arm around the shoulder kind of feeling, like a father figure, like you make, you make a mistake, yeah. don't worry, just, you know, learn from it. Whereas Mourinho, it's you made a mistake, get out of my sight, you're not in the team anymore. And, yeah. and uh, you, you have players, don't you? You need the arm around the shoulder, you need other players, you need a telling off. And I think they're the former, and I think it's completely been a... <laughs> they don't know anything at, at Tottenham other than Pochettino, those two. So to yeah, suddenly exactly. get that complete change, I think there's been a complete... Wow, yeah. what, what is this? But I, I, I think with Winch, you make a good point there, side to side, that's his game going. I think the lack of a playmaker has affected them both. And yeah, Eriksen yeah. going and not replacing him because Winks can then sit deep because then you've got the four, including Eriksen up top, doing what they do. And, and Winks can... And, and he five. needs to do the five-yard passing. Winks needs the five-yard five, uh, five yard passing. It gets overshadowed. So instead of just put, uh, passing sideways, it's not just that, obviously. It's his drop of the shoulder, getting in the right positions because you can't always square the ball. You can't always square the ball from, from the left side to the right side. And if you do, if you do it a lot in games... The fullback will figure it, and doesn't matter how good your high square ball is, you know the left back or right back will start figuring it. So you you have to stop doing it. So you need a winks in centre midfield who's going to collect the ball and get it out to the other side quick, transition quickly instead of the square ball. And when he's at his best, winks he tries to square ball square balls himself. When he's confident, when he's confident, he he can do that. And because he doesn't make t- tackles, he shadows very well. Like Gilberto and Carrot doesn't have to make the challenges. He shadows the players, the opposition players into traffic so other defenders where they can make the challenge or in no man's land where they can't make a difference in the game it's not good to watch and the normal fan I'm not disrespecting fans I'm not disrespecting fans, but it's very difficult to see it's very difficult to be like oh yes he shadowed someone do you know what I mean it's it's not something you're going to be that excited about but it is an important important job if you can if you can fit if you can get them into the system uh people say these days people say you build your team around your best player like a Harry Kane so you build your team around Harry Kane metaphorically speaking yes but literally speaking you have to build a team around a Winx a Perlo a character Gilberto because they do not work in certain systems as we've we seen with Harry Winx um, so I stick up for Harry Winx so yeah. much but don't get me wrong he has been bad the last two games and yeah as you say him and Ali probably do they need a, um, they need a, someone to be there someone to be there for, for them. They're not used to it, but they're not, they're no spring chickens now. You know, Winx is 26, Ali's 25. You know, maybe if they go to another club, they're not going to have that as well. Maybe they're not going to have that as well. So they need to, you know, they need to take responsibility. Yeah, well, I, I definitely agree with you there. I've been saying it for years that certain players need a certain system. You look at Salah, brilliant at Liverpool, terrible at Chelsea, because Chelsea aren't, mm. are, aren't their, their team isn't based on the striker and build everything around where Liverpool is. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, but people like a Kane would probably be able to fit in any team, but they're a one-off. We've but, seen yeah, that this season. We've seen Winks, this Winks and Delhi, I definitely think need the playmaker. Wink so he can sit down, uh, sit deep, and like you say, he does the dirty work, which largely goes unnoticed because he's not scoring goals. He doesn't get the headlines. But uh, one player that had, I did think played quite well, and I'm absolutely delighted for him. And I think his goal against uh, it was the game previous at Villa. As massive oh, Bergwijn. 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 I thought he was looking quite good. And in, in Mourinho's way of uh, you protect the right back or left back, whichever way he was playing. When we had that run where we beat Chelsea, Arsenal, not, not Chelsea, City, Arsenal and Drew at Chelsea, I thought he was superb. I think he's by yeah. far and away in our team, the best winger by a mile in helping the forward. It reminds me of Lennon. I think that Liverpool game where he missed that shot against the post and then that awful abuse which people should be arrested for that I think completely mm. shot his confidence down to pieces and then he stopped taking people on he scores that goal against Villa and then he was trying to take people the, the left back on against Leicester I think he could be an important player and he's still young people forget as well like, you know very young new city got, he, he's like 22 23 he's moved to a completely different country he's still a young person so it can have that effect exactly. I'm delighted for him with that goal it's unfortunate we couldn't win but I've seen definite improvements there. I think he's a confidence player. So I think with the right manager, right system, he could be absolutely outstanding. A new player, but he could be make a real impact next year. 
he works perfect in this system with Kane dropping deeper as well because he's the only winger I see that moves into that striker role. When Kane gets, because we know Kane is not really playing as a striker, he's like false, not even a false nine, he's like a centre mid at times because, you know, that's how he's got so many assists. And, I lo- you know, I love the wingers. Son, Son does it sometimes. Son, do- Son does it sometimes, don't get me wrong, but Son's, Son's ability that makes him so great, which puts him in the world-class bracket, is the same as Bao, when he, when he sort of on the right comes inside on his left and Son comes inside on his right. So they don't take over the striker role when Kane's out, but Bergwijn done it time and time again. We saw it against Villa. That's why he should have scored a hat-trick, probably. And he scored from that position. And his work, as his, his work rate is incredible. And his work rate, he can do it for 90 minutes. Lamella and Lucas can do it off the bench. They can do it off the bench for 30 minutes. But Bergwijn, he, 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 can, he can do it for the, for the full 90. And uh, it was, yeah, as you see, it was first team before Christmas. It's weird how, yeah, we just have first teamers and they go. Sissoko was as well. Sissoko played every game up until Christmas. Um, and then, yeah, we put in Doble next to Hoiberg and then Hoi- Hoiberg suffers because he hasn't got, well, and Doble is definitely not a defensive midfielder or, or La Kelso. So, um, yeah, we changed things a lot since Christmas. And um, that was one of the things. And he's just not got, even in Europa League, he hasn't been sticking Bergwijn off. Like I, say, I, just, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. But yeah, hopefully, well, we can't sell him. I'll be really, really yeah, disappointed. Yeah. I, I, with the amount of deadwood we have, exactly, with the amount of deadwood we have, if, if Lamella stays and we sell Bergwijn, I'll be, oh, <laughs> it'd be shocking. I wouldn't be surprised, but it'd be, it'd be, it'd be shocking. Yeah, oh, I mean, there's a very, very good chance that Bale, that was Bale's last game. Mm. And then you've got Bergwijn there, who obviously isn't as good because Bale's Bale, but he can go yeah, in and do that good. job. And, and what he does better than Bale is track back and help the fullback. Helps that he's younger, so he's probably got that, that, that energy and, and engine that Bale had uh, what was it, 10 years ago. But yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd be pretty angry if we sold Bergwijn. But talking about it, do you think it will get him back? There's a very good chance that we'll lose Kane. But if we don't lose Kane, even if we do lose Kane or don't lose Kane, that third goal, which I know you wanted to talk about, that was all three linking up. Obviously, I know. It, it, it's a good run from Sun, which Bale spotted. Kane's then run off of Sun, which Sun spotted. Bales then thought, oh, he, he might not score here, get me in position. And then Kane spotted him in a good finish. But, I mean, if we could get that for a full season with an attacking manager, which is what we hoped, I think, well, certainly me, when we got Bale back again, oh, them three when Bale gets fit. But we're with a manager who doesn't believe in attacking. But if we can get an attacking manager and keep those three, I mean, their communication and, and will just get better and better. And it's that third goal. I know you wanted to talk about that. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, you summed it up perfectly. I mean, Lucas started it off and that was a very good ball out to bow, actually, because Lucas is passing shocking usually, but quick ball out from the counter-attack to, to, to Bale. Uh, and what a ball from Bale that was. I mean, every each time that a player got the ball in that move from Bale, I was thinking, oh, it's going to come to nothing. It's going to come to nothing. I thought Bale ran it a little bit too far, but played a perfect ball into Son. And I thought, oh, Son's going to get taken out by the centre. Great little flick. And then Kane doesn't shoot straight away. He goes a little bit too far and then pulls it back and then bow on his left foot. So it was brilliant. It was so good. I mean, each, I mean, a lesser player would have lost the ball in each of those positions because they were, they were, they were not easy. None of those things were easy to do. Um, and you can see where the world-class talent was. And as you say, those three link up. It, yeah. All season, we, we look at it, we finished seventh. We finished seventh. We were first before Christmas. We were full. We would have got something going with those three because Val was injured at the start of the season. So you think that only things would have got better after Christmas, but they got but they got worse. Mourinho didn't play him. He refused to play him for, for a lot of times. So I think the only game where they were all good, I mean, Son wasn't at his best, but they all played against Palace and we won 4-1. And I think Kane got two assists for Val's two goals and Val got two assists for Kane goes, Kane's goals. But that's the thing. If you've got three attackers, quality attackers, world-class attackers, you only need two to turn up. You only, you only need two. And each t- one can have a sort of off day. But... It doesn't matter. You've still got two other world-class ones. Um, and yeah, Bale next, I, I don't see it happening. If Kane goes, maybe. If Kane goes, I can see Bale staying. Um, it, I can't see Kane and Bale both there next year, if I'm honest. Yeah. I, I'm really not sure what will happen there. It will depend on Madrid. And there's talk, isn't there, that after next season, Bale's going to retire. will be 32, 3, something like that. But, but I Yeah, think I heard that. With that goal, though, I've seen something... Takes me back to, I think, Newcastle at home last season. I think 
I think we lost one nil, but it was when Ericsson didn't start. He came on after about seventy minutes. But yeah. when you don't have that playmaker on, <laughs> I go on and on about playmakers all the time. But when you don't have that playmaker on, you saw no one make any runs. But it's mm. all static. So when you've got, a, I think Winks played, and people have to go at him sideways and backwards. There was no runs for him, so he's forced to do that. Whereas exactly. oh, there you've got Bale on, who you know can make the pass. So Son makes the run because he knows there's a very good chance here that I'm using up energy to do something. Whereas if you exactly. haven't got someone like that, there's no, I think they think there's no point in me making a bur- bursting run because it's wasting energy and then I'm completely out of position if we lose the ball. So I, I think that's why a playmaker is important. But I, I think Bale could play as a playmaker. He wouldn't be exactly like Ericsson where Ericsson would get it from out of here off his toes. But in terms of if you break that midfield line, then he can play those passes. But like you say, whether he will come back, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, he certainly just... can. He can play number ten. I mean, that's been horrible number ten, hasn't it, this season? When you got, you know, Ali obviously can play there, Lo Celso and Domble. Like, phew. I mean, for me, the only out and out attacking mid is it's not necessarily because he's so good at number ten, Lo Celso, but for me. He, he lacks the temperament to play centre midfield. He will get too many bookings. He will just get, he makes too many fouls and he will get too many bookings. A little bit hot-headed, um, uh, Lo Celso. So for me, he has to be a number 10 or he has no future. Uh, I think, actually, someone said it the other week about, attack, uh, about number 10. And the same guy actually said, that, you know, he could be very effective at number 10. He said, Lo Celso on the right. I mean, Lo Celso could work on the right, coming inside on his left. Because I know he's not blessed with pace, but... He certainly can't play next to Hoiberg for me, Lukel, so he really, really can't. Um, so I he would have to go number 10 on the number right. 10, I don't think his passing is good enough. Mm. That number 10 generally is the, the the kind of quarterback springing it out 50 yards and all these yeah. players ping it out 50 yards, but really high, so it gives a defender easy, whereas the top playmakers drill it along. Uh, Kane does that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think we've got a problem there. And, and I think that's partly why Mourinho played the way he played, because we didn't have a playmaker, so we had to sit back. But, mm. yeah, I mean... Makes sense. We talked about Sanchez and the... the that, that first penalty, I don't know what you thought. I didn't think it was a... Well, it was... If it is a penalty and a definite penalty, then Kane deserves an apology for having to go and defend himself whenever he sort of like kicks someone's leg that's outstretched. If it isn't a penalty, Bardi has to go and explain why he's kicked his leg like Kane has to. So for me, I don't, I don't know what the rule is, but <laughs> he definitely initiated the contact because Alderville's put his leg out, but he hasn't moved it towards Vardy. Vardy's just made sure he's run into it. So you can argue that out of it was a bit silly knowing that Vardy's coming inside, but Vardy could have easily taken his leg away, which is what Kane gets battered with every time that there's mm. a penalty where he goes over someone's leg. But what yeah. the second one, dead cert penalty. I know there was a pull on uh, uh, Sanchez's arm, but he's completely yanked it back. And, and it just showed how out of his depth against Vardy he was. But that, certainly that first one, what do you think of that? See, I'm the opposite. I'm the exact opposite. I thought the first one was an out-and-out penalty. And I thought this <laughs> the second one... I thought the second one was a penalty. I thought the second one was a penalty. But um, I just saw Vardy Holt grab his arm. He grabbed Sanchez's arm. And oh, Sanchez pulled it away as well. The, the fact of the matter is... The, fact of, the weird one is the first one wasn't given straight away, was it? It went through VAR. So it's always different when, when it's given. You have to have like... Um, that's to be a, a certain amount of doubt. That's to be a certain amount of doubt. So the second one, there was there was enough doubt that you know Vardy didn't hold his arm. So I get why that was given. Um, but from open play, the first one, I thought it was a penalty. I thought it was a penalty. I need to look into it more. I need to look into it more um, for sure. But that is that in a way, that's the modern game. You hit your leg. You hit your leg into someone. And I know Kane gets more flat for it than um, others probably than Vardy because we're always in the top four. He scores more goals than Vardy. Um, uh, England, he's the main man, and yeah, everyone just yeah, everyone's comp- much much more uh, critical of Harry Kane on all fronts. As good as Vardy is, as good as Vardy is, everyone's more critical of Harry Kane. Um, but Harry Kane, does, especially with the headers, doesn't he? He goes into the he goes into the backs and gets the penalties. It's, it's smart. It's part of football now, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's part of football because if you don't go down, um, sometimes the referee just doesn't give it. Even when you've been fouled out and out fouled, they just don't give it. So you've got to make the most of it. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, as soon as you see a leg, as soon as an attacker sees a leg come out, that's it. They're going over it. They're going over that leg. 
So, um, yeah, uh, morally, it's probably not good. But from when I saw it from open play, it looked like a penalty to me. The second one, I would give a penalty, but I, I thought it was less so because I, I swear I saw Vardy put his arm in there. I swear I saw his arm lock San- Sanchez's first and then Sanchez went out. Either way, Sanchez's positioning was terrible for both. So Sanchez is at fault for both. I didn't see the Sanchez the, the pull on his shirt. I think that's probably because I had my head in my hands because Sanchez against him had been ripped apart all game. But in terms yeah. of VAR as well, that third goal, it's definitely hit Kane's hand. Mm. Unintentional, mm. obviously. But the amount of disallowed goals you've seen because it's hit someone, I don't know the rule anymore on hands. It's crazy. So, do, do you think that will take? Obviously, there's a Euros coming up, and when VAR was introduced in the World Cup, I thought it was actually quite good. The Euros will obviously use it. Do you think there'll be a rule change next year, or do you think it'll just be this? Well, we don't know. It's up to whoever whoever's watching it to decide. And and because I mean, yeah, so I mean, it's so it just seems like it's guesswork every game. We're going into it. It's just guesswork every game. I, f- I feel like we need a voice. We need to hear the voice of the VR of the regulator, the one that's up there making the decision. We see it in cricket. Well, we see it in rugby for a referee all game. Um, but uh, you see it in cricket when they make a decision. Now, this is the one thing. This is the one thing I've, I always thought about from the very start, a challenge system. It should be a challenge system. Do you know what I mean? Um, like it's worked perfectly in cricket. I love cricket. It's worked absolutely perfectly in cricket. Tennis, even better, because they actually have the whole card, so they, they know whether it's in or out. So the only issue I can see is what was one that my friend told me about is that managers would wait until the end of the game when they're one nil up and just use the challenges to slow the game down. Yeah, that's what happens in the NFL, doesn't it? It happens in American football. The type of timeouts as well, timeout, timeout. They use it. Um, they 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 use it as as part of game management. But for me, if it gets the correct decision, if it gets the correct decision, that's the for me that's the only way you can really use VR. I don't know two two challenges each, two challenges each, and it could be on anything. It could be, why isn't it on corners? Why can't you use VAA to get a corner? VAR to get a corner, I mean. It's just as important. If someone scores a near post header from the corner, but it, was, it shouldn't have been a corner, then... Uh, then and, and do you know what it does? It actually gives the captain a real... Um, it gives the captain a real role because the captain is just um, chucked on people. It doesn't really matter in football, really. Um, but that would give the... I mean, the captain would have to um, authorise it. It'd be like, yeah, we're going to challenge or maybe the manager on the side. I don't know how that would work. But it gives the captain a role as well, more than just... Um, you know, shaking hands at the front and getting a little emblem uh, <laughs> at, the, at the start of the game. There'll be an actual, there would actually be a role to the to the ca- having the captain's armband. Um, but if that was to happen, I don't think goalkeepers would be having like Casper Schmeichel and Laura. I don't like that anyway. I'm traditional. I don't like the captains having uh, the goalkeepers having the captain's armband. I like a good centre mid or a centre back. Um, we might have that in Hoiberg. We might have that in Hoiberg because he looks like a future captain for sure. But um, yeah, I think um, v- VAR is all over the shop. It's just guesswork. At least, at least, let's hear the voices. Let's hear how how they're coming to this decision. Let's hear how they're coming to, to this decision. I, I don't know why. I don't know why they don't do that. I, I think VAR could work. I, I don't have a, a problem with VAR. What I have a problem with is that you've got a different referee looking at it each time. So it's that's what we were moaning about um, before. It's all open to interpretation and it still is. And then you've got rules like this handball that are made by morons who have never played football in their life. Don't know that it can suddenly just flick up off off a blade of grass or someone's boot onto your hand without you even knowing it. And But, I mean, but then where do you draw the line? Kind of, oh, accidental handball. Is that accidental? Is that on purpose and everything like that? I, I, I don't mind the offside, even though it's absolutely ridiculous that a toenail is offside because offside is offside, although I'm still adding yeah. that Harry Kane goal against Leeds was off. But, but it, it, yeah, they didn't even look at it at all, did they? If it's proved that it is offside, even by like a toenail, then offside is offside. But yeah, yeah. then you get things like Bamford against Palace where it's hit his arm, which I, I, I was unaware of the rule that you can now punch it into the goal like Maradon. <laughs> the offside, you can't score from it. Um, yeah, I, I think the rules but, have an overhaul and, and some sensible well, get get an ex player or a few ex players in to you know create the rules and, and or something like that just well just get an ex expert VAR official that just does VAR officials that just do VAR so they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, but I mean yeah I've, I mean you can't sell a goal sometimes. What hurt oh I know it's horrible that's why I love the championship. That's why <laughs> 
the game of the season was Brentford Bournemouth the other day. Oh, the crowd were back and tackles were flying in. And you know, if the goal, if if it goes in, there's no flag and there's no whistle, it's a go. Yeah. Even for the um, even for the Casper Schmeichel goal, um, mm. uh, it felt like Leicester were complaining because they complain about everything now because they know VAR. So even that which was pretty clear cut. You can see from the replay, it's just. Uh, you know, sometimes you you, you get uh, the keepers get a lot of uh, leeway yeah, yeah, with yeah. fouls in their own box, and I thought maybe there was something there, but he just literally just punched it into his own net. Um, and every round, doesn't he? And then Casper Schmeichel's in Bamis, so trying to get away with it right out. I think that's what. That yeah, means. exactly. So, and it's so it's, it makes the game. It, it just something something special has gone out of the game. Something special has gone out of the game, and that's why maybe a challenge system. Would, would stop that. If you've got a problem, you just challenge it straight away. You don't have to look to, look to VA. Look, you just challenge it straight away. Obviously, offsides, obviously offsides might be a different matter because, not, as you say, offsides, offside. If it is a toenail, it's a toenail. But, um, yeah, they've got to, to be fair, when it first got introduced into tennis and cricket, it's only been two, two, three years, they, uh, they sort of, uh, that, that you found, they saw that there were errors and they, uh, they, they made the system better. So, Hopefully it comes comes with football, but because it's a contact sport, because every game is so so different, um, it, it, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be very very tricky. But uh, yeah, oh, I just I, I personally would do you, with the offsides. Um, do you, would you just take it like I wish they are and they came into it? I just wish it was back to back to the old days. I, I don't mind the offsides because you used to get things which were quite clearly offside. If referee didn't see it or linesman didn't see it, and then it scored a goal, then it can be the difference between someone going down, getting into Europe, or whatever. I, I don't mind it with this because it's consistent, even though it's ridiculous. It's consistent. Mm. But, but where we and, talk, and the pace of the Premier League, the offside, the pace of the Premier League it is um, to, to yeah. catch that on 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 a, off, like, a linesman's eye. Situations like Bamford's arm is offside, or his hand is offside. That's ridiculous. Mm. But, yeah, I, I don't mind the offside as much, but because there's a clear rule there with handball, no one knows what the rule is anymore, and so it's completely 100 percent open to interpretation. So if you get a, yeah. a, a favourable referee, you score a goal with that. If you get one that doesn't like you, you don't. But I, I that think is it. That's it. But whether it will or not, I don't know. It is still in its infancy, I guess. So we could be being a bit harsh, but. And the fact they changed the handball rule halfway through the season is just crazy. Uh, I, I don't know how you, you can't do that. Ball has helped or, or, or benefited one team, and now it's not going to benefit anyone else. But that could be a direct rival for a league title, your Champions League relegation. It's just. Yeah. It shows, once again, it shows the power. I've said it a few times already in this. It shows the power of social media. It shows the power of social media. People. Say, oh, you can't do this. And even the commentators, the analysts straight after the game, you know, they go crazy. You can't do this. You can't do that. And people listen now. People listen. Um, uh, and they can literally change a rule after one weekend. Uh, a weekend, can, uh, a rule can be changed. And it shouldn't be. It, there's no way. It, it should not be changed until the end of the season. Then you can review it and you can, you can find out what you, need to, what you need to do to make things uh, uh, move slightly better but yeah do, doing it mid, doing it mid-season is, is a bad bad move on all fronts for me I think they did it twice but I, I mean but obviously our goal counted but I, I think if, if even if that was disallowed that third goal I don't think it would have made a difference in the pattern of play because Leicester had to go for it and Bale yeah, was yeah. finding so much space and that fourth goal I don't know how he got the space anyway it was obviously a pass to him but I thought Kane's run was superb because if you look at yeah. it Loyuncu literally runs past Bale and ignores him. And then mm. the, the other defender, I can't remember who it was, was nowhere near. And then all of a sudden, because he ran in the straight line. The, the commentator on yeah. Sky said, oh, Bale being brilliant. It's like, I can run in a straight line if, if there's space <laughs> me. But I thought Kane's yeah. run was superb. If Kane doesn't make that run, Bale does have to do something brilliant. But I mean, Leicester now uh, fluffed up Champions League twice. If that yeah, was Mateo yeah. or Tottenham, we'd be absolutely laughed off the hounded, um, wouldn't we? But do you think there's rumours, wouldn't there, that we were after Rogers if they didn't get Champions League? I still personally don't think he'd go because I think now, after winning the FA Cup and the owners being what they are at Leicester, he will get money to try and get into that Champions League. Whereas I think possibly Tottenham, if he came, he'd only get money if Kane was sold. And <laughs> you can get money, but you've got to get rid of your best player. But do you think he'll 
I think he'll be spoken to, but do you think he'll go there? And if not, do, who do you think will be spoken to as serious contender for the manager? No chance. No chance. In it. <laughs> the hell is Rogers coming to this club? He's got a magnificent blueprint. They're doing their business already, Leicester. They do their business. They know exactly what they're doing. I, I think they're buying a little centre mid for £19 million to, to, um, to compete with Ndidi. And they just do their business so early. They've got players. And as soon as they lose a player, they've got, they got another one. They know exactly who they're targeting once they lose that specific player. Once there's rumours, similar to Chilwell, they've, they've got someone there. I mean, look at James Justin. He cost like five, six million pounds from Luton. They got him from League One. You don't spend, I think it rises to like 10 million pounds as well. Like who buys players from League One? It's a proper scouting system. There's a proper system in place. They don't just do like a fee for a football manager database, you know, yeah. look at the most valuable players and chuck some scouts over there for a couple of games. Like they probably did within Don Blaine and Lokelso. They really look at who's going to fit into the squad, not just in terms of how they play, but, uh, but their uh, mentality, their mentality, their fight, their drive. You know, I feel like they, they spend 10 games, maybe 15 games looking at a player. And our, our scouting system is just awful. Rogers is not going to come. No, no chance. No chance with, a, with everything that's in, involved with the club. The only thing, the only thing now that will tempt managers is the fact you've got Harry Kane and Son sitting there. You've got Harry Kane and Son sitting there. Unbelievable partnership. Unbelievable individually, especially Kane, as we've seen with the stats this season. Uh, that will tempt any manager in the world. Because if you can work, if you can work the... The back line, if you can work the back line, we are going to be a tough nut to crack. If we get a centre back and a right back in, we are going to be a tough nut to crack. We really, really are. Um, so, uh, but that's if we keep Harry Kane. That's if we keep Harry Kane. So that's going to be a big thing in the managerial, um, in the managerial uh, rumours and appointments. Like the big ones, like the Allegri's that are still available and, and maybe the Saris, they're going to, you know, be, I want Harry Kane. If Harry Kane stays in this completely different job, it's a completely different job. There's so many, so many links. I'm going to have to do a tier list. I don't, I've done a tier list with <laughs> Deadwood on Friday. There's going to be about 60 people in it. There's going to be at least 60 people. I heard Frank, Frank, Reich, uh, Frank Reichard come out the other day. He hasn't, had a man, he hasn't had a job for seven years since Saudi Arabia. So, um, yeah, there's so many crazy links. But um, I've liked Sari from the start. I, I like Sari really? more. And his CV, his CV speaks for itself. Napoli, outstanding with no budget. Chelsea one season, won Europa League, finished third, only behind uh, Man City and Liverpool, both nearly hit 100 points. Only had one season that won Europa League. Juventus won a Scudetto last season with an ageing squad. We've seen that they've got an ageing squad this year because they finished like fourth or fifth. Um, he was only there for one year. He's, he's proven and um, I like him. He's a bit, he's a bit, a bit unique, isn't he, with his roll-up on the side or whatever it is. Um, he's... Uh, yeah, he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of a, a personality there, and I love Surrey Ball. I love Surrey Ball, so I'd personally go with him. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be Graham Potter. I've, I've got a, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be Graham I, I, I Potter. I like Graham Potter just because he plays good football, and I, I think we've struggled historically, certainly in the Levy era, with managers who have got a pedigree and a name, certainly in an attacking name. When you think of uh, Ramos, although I felt sorry for him, he won the League Cup, and then basically Levy sold all of his strikers. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, Santini was a big name, and then Mourinho, obviously. Whereas the ones that have been successful for us, yeah, I think true. A, a Yol, who I don't think he'd ever managed, does he? He was um, Santini. He's an assistant manager. Yeah, he's, he's an assistant, wasn't he? Harry Redknapp was a big name, but he was a big name in getting away from relegation rather than exactly. Top. Pochettino, need I say more? Uh, but yeah, my, my big, big worry is we're waiting until after the Euros and we'll get Martinez in and I, I can't deal with oh, that. I can't, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Guy has got the best team on paper that Belgium have ever had in their history and he can't get past the quarterfinal. Uh, I, I'm also slightly worried that no one will want it and then we'll just keep Mason and that could ruin him because he's just not ready. I don't think we keep no chance Mason's going to stay. I don't think there's... Oh. That would be, yeah, that would be awful. I heard like um, after he won the first game, after he won the first game, a lot of the fellow streamers were like, yeah, just give him a chance. Why not? Just give him a chance. If he gets us into the top four. If, if, if that turns into a Sherwood situation where all the top six batter us, good yeah. then Sherwood, I don't really care. Honestly, I don't really care if it ruins him. I don't care if it ruins him. If it ruins the club, if we end up like uh, mid-table, then that's, you know, that's, that, that's, that's absolutely awful. Um, but he seems like a good guy, Mason. He's, I love his conferences. He seems very, 
in a very he's been put in a difficult position for a 29 year old. I mean, Lloris is five years older than him. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's incredible. How do you manage uh, a player that's got like 130 caps and five years older than you? It's uh, incredibly difficult. And it wasn't like he was a legendary player, Mason. He's not like a Gerard or a Lampard. He was a you know he was solid. He was solid. But um, he wasn't legendary. I think it helps him that he's best buddies with Kane, who uh, he's not the captain, but I think he's probably the leader in the vocal leader in that dressing room and on the pitch. Yeah, we saw that, didn't we? Yeah, we saw that. If Kane says something, I mean, you saw the the documentary. It was him doing all the the vows in team talks. Uh, of course, it was. Not, not it's ridiculous. Long. But yeah, ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, when in in terms of signings, do you think we will make any, or do you think? There isn't any money and we have to get rid of Kane because it, because oh, Nuno as well, I was thinking of as well, because he's obviously going to be free now, but he is a defensive manager. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if Levy approached him month two or whatever ago. Nuno said, well, I'm, I'm probably leaving Wolves at the end of the season. There's rumblings about that. It was all oh, right. I'll wait. He'll be free. But I don't think Nuno would sell Wolves out like that. Uh, the thing with Nuno is I've done a preview before the Wolves game uh, with a couple of Wolves chaps, um, very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable streamers. And uh, they were saying how 50-50 they are with Nuno, the fans. They really, really struggled with him this season. I couldn't believe it when they were coming out with that. I was like, really? I mean, if obviously seventh twice, first two seasons. I thought they'd been in the league four years, but this is only their third season. It seems like they fit so well. It's only their third season. First two seasons, they finished seventh. Obviously, they've had the Raul Jimenez issue. Their biggest thing is depth. They've got absolutely no depth whatsoever. They haven't signed a centre back. We said it there. They haven't signed a. They bought in a. Yeah, it's crazy. Silva, who's 18, and. and, (laughs) Yeah, he's just not ready, is he? The the plan, I think, was for him to be, you know, the impact sub or or when Jimenez needed a rest. And Jimenez is a quality striker. Outstanding. To lose him, I think, ruined their season, really. But yeah, I, I can't believe. Yeah. He's put them on the map. Oh, he really has. But saying that, he did when he brought them up. They said like uh, they got like Neves. They got Neves in front of a lot of the top European clubs because they paid him like 70, 80 grand in the championship. So they had serious, serious money in the championship. So it was a matter of time. But um, apparently, he's become more and more negative as the seasons have gone on. And I was doing it with two. I was doing it with two streamers. One was absolutely like, yeah, we, we need to, we love him, but you know, he needs to go. We need we need the next step up. And if that's the if that's how they're looking at things, they need the next step up because they can't they can't take us to the next level, then you know, we need top four. Supposedly top four. You know, I don't think he's our man. But before I spoke to them, and in general, I was thinking, yeah, why don't why, why are we not targeting this guy? Why are we not targeting this guy? So I was shocked when he said that, but yeah, do we want the Wolves leftovers? Because basically it's Wolves leftovers because they, quite frankly, they didn't want him. I think that it wasn't mutual. I don't think he resigned. He resigned. I think, you know, genuinely the board, you know, wanted, wanted to get rid of him. So, um, yeah, they spend a lot of money and their scouting system is outstanding. We talk about Fabio Silva. That was a weird, 37 million pounds they paid for him, 18 years old. It's crazy fees. But most usually their scouting system is absolutely incredible. They just go after the Portuguese players, don't they? But, um, yeah. Uh, so do you think, Graham, it's a good, good thing you mentioned about, yeah, the Jacques Santini lasted a month. The ones with, I never really thought about that. The high reputation fail, considerably like fell quite badly. So, yeah. So what would, would you, do you agree with Graham Potter? I mean, I've got a funny feeling it's just going to be Graham Potter, especially they beat Man City towards the end of the season. As I say, it's a fickle game. It's a fickle game. That's going to, we're going to be thinking about that. So I, I got, do you think it's going to be a risky one, like a Potter? I think anyone is risky just because we're on that mm. kind of teetering edge if we don't get top four yeah. in our best players. But I think I, I wasn't for Graham Potter. And then my friend uh, said he'd be brilliant for you. And then he said, if they had someone like an Ings in their Brighton, they'd, they'd be pushing for Europe because they create so much many chances, attacking play and, and free-flowing football. They just don't have anyone to put it in the net. So, yeah, yeah and he's young. He plays attacking football, but I, I think the issue that you have is Spurs have gone from Jose to go from Jose Mourinho to Graham Potter. People see it's a step down, but I mean, it's crazy. Pochettino it's crazy. wasn't really a high fancied manager when he was at Southampton. No, he wasn't. And, not at all. You know, look out. I, I, I was guilty without going Pochettino. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. 
know. Yeah, same. He didn't. He, he didn't even have. Uh, he didn't even talk English in his interviews, did he? He had a translator yeah. in his interviews. He was like, "What?" Yeah, I mean, I, I would you prefer Potter to uh, Martinez or Southgate, or would you rather take a chance? On oh, them? I'll take Potter over Martinez and Southgate any day of the week. Any day of the week. Um, yeah, Martinez. Uh, he, there's there's no adapting. He cannot adapt. He's just very attacking. Very attacking and. Um, to attack and he's got a lot of baggage hasn't he he's got a lot of baggage so that's a good thing with Potter he hasn't got too much baggage he, he will have fresh ideas and I think that's what was good uh, about Pochettino I think that's what was good about Pochettino it was risky this is even more risky for Potter though because he's you know Southampton were ninth or 10th you know 8th, ninth, 10th you know 15th last season I don't know where they finished it was 17th last week maybe higher because they finished season off a, a bit better but you know it's not a winning how, how do you go from you know, losing more games than you win to, you know, having to win at pretty much every week at Spurs. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's going to be tricky. It's a big risk for Potter. I don't see too many goals though, have they? I, I don't think they've been battered that many times. It's just losing by the old goal here or there because they can't yeah. put it in the net. But, I mean, yeah, it is risky, like you say. I mean, I think they finished 17th, didn't they? No, that was Burnley. I think they finished 16th, but... Possibly. Regardless of who comes in, do you think there's money to spend there, or do you think it all it's it's get rid of players to get money in? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I tell you what, I'll tell you what. This may sound a little bit silly, but I think a lot of it was uh, the statement that came out where he pretty much said that. Lee, uh, Denise, he was saying like, look, we're not going to spend money unless we get some money in. That's going to be our transfer budget pretty much uh, this season. That was straight after the protests. I, th- I honestly think the protests could have been so big and they were so bad that um, Levy just thought, you know what, I can do what I want. I can literally do what I want. I can, I can give them no budget this summer. And the fans, if the fans are not going to protest after the ESL and everything that's happened after the last few months, um, then he can do what he wants. And I felt like he must have been watching them and seeing that there was nobody there. I felt like he can do what he wants. Uh, I, can, I can just say, look, we, we, we spend the money that we bring in, which is perfect for any chairman, owner, because you've got to, you get the money in, you spend it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I, think, I think maybe there might be £10 million pounds or £20 million pounds <laughs> he'll put in. And then after that, it's just it's literally, yeah, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to sell. We're going to have to sell to, to bring the players in. My issue with that, you saw it with Ericsson, you saw it with Rose. He wants the money that he wants. The, yeah. Rose, for example, is a player who's gone from the best left back in the league to a left back in the league. You're not going to get the 40 million that you would have got three years ago. So you've got to, you know, but he seems to like cut his nose off to spite his face sometimes. It's just get the money, yeah. get the players that the manager wants in. But I mean, with the protest, I'm not sure if he even paid attention. That, 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 that announcement he made, I think, was in the program for the Villa game, just said, I. You know, even though he said things that we wanted to hear, it was like I couldn't give a shit about the fans. I don't care. It's like I'm the, I'm the chairman here. I've got how many percent. I'll do what I want. And you know, but yeah, I mean, he's yeah, got free. I, 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 I think he's got a free road to do what he wants. I think he's got a free, uh, a free, a free road to do what he wants. But I tell you, what, when the fans are back. When the fans are back next season, we can make a difference in the stadium. We can make a difference. We saw we saw what protests can do in the ESL. Unbelievable. I thought that was inevitable that that was going to come into it. We see the power of the fans. And we saw what it, what it, what it done for West Ham when uh, David Sullivan wasn't spending any, any money at all. The fans went crazy inside the stadium, rioting, chucking bottles. I'm not saying that's the best way to go, but it led to an increased transfer budget, an increased wage budget. And look where they are now. They could have finished in the top four. They could have finished in the top four. They finished above us. They started spending money. They started spending serious money and, and, and they're, they're getting the returns. They're getting the returns in now. So I think next season is going to, it's going to be such a crazy season. It's going to be such a crazy, so many, there's going to be so, so many talking points. Great for us streamers. Great for us streamers <laughs> because it's just so, I don't know where to start. Even now, I just don't know where to start. Um, it's a difficult, difficult time. We must keep the faith. We must keep the faith. But uh, yeah, hopefully Harry Kane doesn't go. But if he does, it's, I think it's going to be 150. So then that's, you know, it's a hell of a lot of money to, to put into the squad. And, then, and, and a name I didn't think about, we're talking about strikers. I didn't think about it until yet, Raul Jimenez. I didn't even think about it, but Raul Jimenez can do a job. He can do a real, real job. If Nuno does come in and maybe brings, you know, him in, maybe Neves, you know, there's, they've got some quality there. Even Adama Traore on the right, He's not, um, 
He's not very efficient. He's completely um, inconsistent. But a lot of that this season is because Jimenez hasn't been there. His yeah. assists are down because Jimenez is not there. So um, I'd love someone like a Traore. I'd love him. He's just he's a Spursy. He's proper proper Spursy in his inconsistency. But like he's he's a big guy and he rips plays apart. But um, yeah, Jimenez is not a name that's popped up too much. So if we do if we do lose Kane, maybe maybe we've got two hundred million pounds to spend. We sell one or two others and. Uh, I, th- I think you know if that's it. Yeah, I think Jimenez would be a real risk. You know, two years ago, absolute dead sir if Kane left. Whereas because of that horrific injury, I think mm, you're going to have to see what it's like when he has headers, collisions, and stuff. Because I, mean, I don't know too much about head injuries and all of that, but, but to be taken off and have a did he get a fractured skull? Yeah, he's been yeah. fit. Apparently, he's been fit for the past two months. I Apparently think he's been... Mason got a fractured skull, didn't he? But obviously, it can be different. Yeah. But I think it could be possible that he get, goes in for a crunching header. Yeah. And then, oh, ah, oh, my head, my head, and then he, and then that's kind of his career over. Well, so I think, and and he backs out, and he backs out. The, the, you yeah. know, it's, it's a it's a um it's a normal thing. Like after you've gone through that, to sort of back out, and especially human as he relies in his uh, fight, doesn't he? He's a real fighter up there. So, yeah, it would be a risk. So I think if he starts in whenever the season starts again, I think January would be a good time for that because then you'd see after uh, four or five months, yeah, he's back to being now Jimenez. But, yeah, I'm, yeah I mean, maybe Levy has been watching the riot, uh, the, not the riots, the protests, and then thinks, like you say, oh, in the stadium, they'll, they'll be voicing there, so I've got to do something. So maybe it's just a load of loan deals. Maybe there is some money there. But we, we definitely, yeah. like you mentioned earlier, we need a commanding um, centre-back. We don't have... Well, oh. The only one we've got is our old Toby, Toby 34. So we need... Yeah, he's, 30, he's going to be, yeah, be like 33 next season. And the same age as the Tongan. The Tongan was outstanding, but... You know, his time was cut, his, you know, time was catching up with him. So we really we had to let him go. The same with Toby. As the years go by, it's coming deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, yeah, his press on on attackers is so so bad now. That's why he doesn't we don't see the long balls as much with him. Uh, he used to get a lot of assists, but he was higher up the pitch, so you can do that. He's playing so deep now, he can't even attempt it because the <laughs> long ball for him is like 70 yards now because he's so deep. Um so uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh, he's the best bunch of a bad uh, a, a bad group of centre backs. Uh, I'm disappointed. Rodon hasn't played more uh, during the last five or six games. If he can't get in with this group of centre backs, I don't think he's ever going to get in. Quite frankly, um, so but yeah, that's a big one. A brawler, a brawler centre back, a Vidic, a Terry. If you have a bad first touch, you know you're going to know about it. You're going to get kicked. You're going to get elbowed if you have a bad first touch. Um, yeah, we really need we need really we really need something like that. But I tell you what, Hoiberg has been a good signing for that very reason. He's had a very good first season, and he is one of the yeah, he's he's certainly been our sign of the season. Reggie, yeah, Reggie a couple of months ago, you could have argued, but no, he's 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 fallen off a cliff in terms of defensively. Hoiberg's been a big one. If you can get a real commanding centre back and keep Kane, you know, things can change just like that. A couple of signings, it really, really can change things. So uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's the case. I think something has to happen because we can't just go on with a new manager and just this group of players. But um, yeah, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I've got to go back and actually do some work. <laughs> uh, it's great having you on. Thanks so much for coming on. Cheers, man. Been a pleasure. Cool. Uh, you mentioned your stream a few times there. If people don't listen to it or watch it, uh, where can people find it? Right, so it's uh, Spurs, Spurs on TV on YouTube. I've got this. It's the same on Twitter, Spurs on TV and Instagram. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll release content pretty much every day through the season. Slightly less now the season's over, but I will, I'll be doing other stuff like the Euros. Um, the Euros and, uh, as I said, I'm going to be doing a tier list shortly of the managers, potential managers that come in. I, it was good. I, I enjoyed the tier listing on Friday. A lot of other streamers do it, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was really fun. So I'm going to do a few tier lists, potential signers as well. So, yeah, just head over to Spurs on TV. Give me a sub if you can. Uh, check out some of my videos. It'd be uh, yeah, that'd be yeah, really really appreciated. And do the same. Do the same for Chris. Absolutely, do the same for Chris. Get subbing because we both, as the season's coming to an end, every sub, every like, it helps. It helps us grow uh, for next season. For next season, and um, it's probably it's going to be my f- first full season as a streamer. I'll probably the same for you, Chris. As you say, we need all the subs we can get. And um, yeah, thanks. It's been a it's been a pleasure being on here today. Uh, yeah, like I say, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, like Tommy said there, if you don't subscribe or like his videos channel, do that now. 
Uh, I've been on a couple of times. Great channel, great videos. Uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully come back on here soon. Uh, hopefully back on yours soon. And yeah, I'm so chat so about Euros and uh, you know have the same conversation we've had today about which the new manager is going to be. That's going to be yeah. That and Kane is just still going to dominate through the summer, isn't it? Managers and Kane is just going to dominate. It's inevitable. Yeah, but yeah, uh, like, like I say, subscribe, like Tommy's channel uh, if you don't already. Thanks so much for watching. Before you go, please make sure you give the like and subscribe buttons a click. Any questions, comments, or any suggestions for future episodes, if you just add those into a comment on the YouTube video. If you're listening to the audio-only podcast, thanks so much for listening. Anyone who wants the audio-only podcast, you can get that at Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your audio podcast from. Alternatively, if you go to Twitter, at LTalk Tottenham, you can find all the information there. I'll be back soon. Until then, come on, you Spurs!